Well, hello, everyone. My name is Tom Johnson, and I'm the director of the EOGogic's Web Live programs. Having been involved in computer-based training in one form or another for more than 25 years now, it's my pleasure to welcome each of you to this Web Live session. For those of you who may be new to EOGogics, I'll refer you to the About EOGogics page on our website. Suffice to say that the EOGogics team, led by KK Aurora, has been involved with many landmark telecom projects worldwide during the last 20 years or so. In fact, uh, I'm pretty sure KK is in our audience here somewhere. KK, are you there? Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the class. Now, let me introduce our presenter today. Uh, Dr. Paul Kakaias, a uh, principal member of the EOGogics Telecommunications faculty, is one of uh, our industry's most knowledgeable and dynamic presenters. With more than 30 years' experience in both wireless and wireline, he brings depth and clarity that few can match. Paul has taught thousands of classes to spellbound audiences worldwide. His teaching repertoire is quite extensive. It includes 3G, LTE, 4G, WiMAX, OFDM, MIMO, HSDPA, HSUPA, or just plain HSBA, UMTS, GPRS, EDGE, GSM, CDMA 2000, CDMA, IDEN, and TETRA. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Paul Kakaias. Well, Paul, I'm not hearing you. Have you got your phone on mute? Oops. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Tom. And I had muted the line and forgot to unmute it. That's so, right. number one. <clears throat> uh, okay, well, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I look forward to spending a few hours today and an equal number of uh, approximately three hours tomorrow as we talk about uh, LTE and uh, where we were, how we got to it, and uh, a few words about where we're going. So, um, <clears throat> as Tom explained, please feel free to use the chat and, and all the other mechanisms of um, uh, communicating back and forth. Uh, the technology, as Tom said, is wonderful. It just takes a little bit of getting used to for all of us to try to replicate a dynamic environment that might be the case uh, in, in a live situation. Just as a test, I, I'd like to, um, uh, for everybody to sort of like focus on the uh, feedback uh, tab um, and the vote on the yes, no, uh, vote yes if you can hear me and uh, vote no if you can hear me. So I see the votes are trickling in, so that's great. And uh, good. Uh, I think uh, mostly everybody voted, so we're, we're in good shape. I will, from time to time, use this feedback mechanism so that I can manage to both get the feedback from you and uh, keep you awake. And don't worry about being right or wrong. This is a learning experience. It's not a, a test of uh, how well uh, you know the stuff or, or, or whatever. So don't be shy. Feel free to, to both answer and, and to pose questions uh, both as we go along and at the break times and, and, and the end and so on. So, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, obviously, please respect the intellectual property rights as articulated on, on, on this slide. And I'm going to start off with uh, discussing a, a, a little bit about the, the, the history of 3G slash UMTS and how we're going to 4G slash LTE. In, 3GPP has been in existence for approximately 10 years, and the UMTS system first came out in late 99, early 2000, and of course that was back then called Release 99 uh, because uh, it was more or less released in 1999, and it met all the IMT 2000 requirements, and as such, it was eligible to be called a 3G system because that was the popular a way of distinguishing from older things, such as uh, uh, the by now be beginning to become obsolete, a fantastic system called GSM, 
which I'm sure you all know, and indeed has captured uh, uh, more than 80% of the world's mobile communication subscribers. Uh, uh, by now, it was probably around 70% back then, maybe even a little less, but certainly it was, it was growing. So it was clear that GSM was uh, going to, uh, to, to become obsolete. Uh, everything ages, everything dies, and uh, so does technology, and 3G was to replace that. A uh, little people want, were willing to realize that 3G itself would see the day of extinction, and that's what we're talking about more or less now. I don't want to, to, to take up uh, much of our very limited time in kind of like discussing all the details of each of evolutionary step, but I do want to focus on a couple of important things, um, and I've bolded them in the slide for, for our, our ease. Release 5 introduced HSDPA, and the most important aspect of HSDPA, as far as I'm concerned, is the introduction of hybrid ARQ. Uh, now, hybrid ARQ had also been used in Edge, so it's not fair to say that hybrid ARQ was somehow unique to, to UFDS because it predated it. Uh, but uh, it's important that it was included as part of the UMTS system. And uh, the second aspect of Release 5, which uh, a lot of people that are in sort of like the air interface uh, focus, which I have to admit I'm one of those guys, but I do get into the um, network side of, of things as well. And sometimes I recognize that uh, the two sides either don't communicate with each other very well or don't recognize the importance of each other. And the reason I'm saying that is because while the focus can well be on the air interface when we talk about mobile communications. That's what people understand. I have my mobile and I move around. Uh, what's happening on the network side is very important. And uh, the fact that Release 5 provided support of IP on the network side uh, was very important and uh, continues to be very important. So that's as far as Release 5. Uh, release 6 introduced the concepts of HSDPA for the uplink direction and, of course, that became known as HSUPA, which is important for many users uh, because you want to upload stuff fast. Uh, much less visible to the user is the capability to do MIMO. From a network provider point of view, the multiple input, multiple output capability is, is very important. That was introduced in, uh, in uh, Release 6, but it really... The, the, the full support for MIMO came in with HSPA Plus, which is in, in, in Release 7. In Release 7, we had additional adaptive and modulation coding schemes, and that's also important because it gives us bigger flexibility. That is kind of the end of uh, UMTS. Um, it is not the end of 3GPP, though. 3GPP continues to, of course, um, provide enhancements to everything we talked about so far, but they, with Release 8, which was released just about a year ago, um, they shifted gears uh, dramatically, in, in, in some might say, as far as the air interface is concerned. Continued support of the MIMO is not the dramatic shift. We were supporting MIMO before, we continue, we enhance it, etc. The dramatic shift is that... Um, we, CDMA as, 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 a, as, as a radio technology, which had, um, as, as many of us remember the days of big fights that, that Qualcomm had made to make CDMA come to the forefront to displace the older FDMA or, uh, and or I should say TDMA technologies, where well, CDMA itself uh, is beginning to see its own um, disappearance of sorts uh, and replacement with uh, something that uh, sounds very much like uh, FDMA. Um, it, it just got little, this little orthogonal um, a, a word in, in front of it. And I just uh, uh, noticed that I have a typo there that M uh, should not be an M, should be a D. But um, so OFD, OFD, orthogonal frequency division, Multi ah, I'm getting my acronyms mixed up. OFDM is what it should be, OFDM. So the M is okay, the A is extraneous. So it should be OFDM. Just fix that, make it OFDM. My apologies. So OFDM slash OFDMA. 